Breakfast lately has been consisting of two servings of Fiber One, one serving of Hershey's cooking cream cereal, a uh, serving of cinnamon toasters, which is like cinnamon toast crunch. I just put milk on this, usually like 0% uh, fat milk. Banana, eight servings, egg substitute, two eggs, some pico de gallo, salsa in those eggs, and an ogre salad. And did I say banana? Usually I have my vitamins and stuff. Watch some TED videos. Dexter, and then uh, get myself ready to go to the gym. August vlog. All right, guys. OHP workout. This is my heavy uh, upper day. I started off with a 200 pound uh, OHP for a set of I think five, something like that. Anyways, I'm gonna continue on all the questions I left off on uh, the first time getting laid question, and I can go in depth about this, but. Um, I don't know, it's kind of a weird question because uh, I don't want to put too many people off because it kind of got weird at one point in kind of inappropriate ways, but I won't go there. I won't go there. The next topic is my thoughts about being a bodybuilder and partying. Um, hmm. I'm not going to tell you guys, oh yeah, you should totally uh, sacrifice partying for bodybuilding, and I'm not going to say, hey, you should slack on your bodybuilding um, so that you can have fun and party. Honestly, we all make our own choices. We all have our own uh, life. We all have different preferences. Some people like to party more. Some people don't like to party at all. Some people think partying is retarded. Um, and others just like to stay focused on, say, business or say, schoolwork. So everybody makes their own choices and creates their own balance. Um, some people just have shitty balance. And uh, those are honestly my thoughts about being a bodybuilder while partying. Um, being a bodybuilder isn't a big deal. It's really not that big of a deal. Um, you can't... Uh, the, the funny thing is so many people... Uh, different people are going to take it more serious than others. But the funny thing is it's like there are people that, that go too hardcore. Where it's, it's not even beneficial. In fact, it's only negative at that point. You get so many people that they think that just because they are more hardcore in their own ways, like more self-torture or more suffering, that they're better than others, uh, makes them a better bodybuilder. And in most cases, it makes their life worse uh, when they think, when they put themselves in this kind of uh, kind of lifestyle where they're all about being more hardcore than others. And um, it, it really is about. Do what makes you happy, um, and not getting too crazy with things. Really, just not getting too crazy, because for most people, bodybuilding isn't going to go anywhere. It ain't shit. Um, in, in fact, it's just a hobby, so enjoy that hobby as much as you can, okay? Enjoy it. Um, and, and find balance with it, with everything else, okay? And it's cool to be hardcore and everything, if that's your thing. But at the same time, don't think you're better than other people. Um, next topic is more on macros. Fat, carbs, proteins, guys. Macro uh, precision style dieting or macronutrient based dieting along with uh, focus on caloric intake. That is the way of the future. It's not about uh, food limitations and that kind of crap. Next topic, Yucky Lovato posted a picture about water depletion with salt water. Please explain this. He's talking about, um, the person who commented here is talking about an Instagram picture that Chris Lovato posted. Um, I think it was like a pre-stage photo picture of him holding some salt and holding a water bottle because he was going to pound some salt. Uh, the reason why a lot of, uh, it's really common in the natural bodybuilding scene. You, well, I don't really know the other scene, but... In my scene, it's pretty common. You'll see guys uh, backstage. Maybe, well, actually, it's not the majority at all. It's really a, a small portion of the bodybuilders. You'll see them uh, smashing some salt, maybe a gram or two or 1.5 grams, maybe three grams in some water uh, just to help with some vascularity on stage. Um, also, muscle fullness. Get some sodium in the muscle. Uh, pull some water in there along with the water, of course. So kind of just a way to fill up a little bit. And you also see people eat just a little bit uh, before getting on the stage. And it's helpful. I'll admit it's helpful. I like, I like the concept of it. 
and uh, is it magical? Not necessarily. Um, but that's what uh, Lovato was posting about when it came to water depletion. He, he made an Instagram post saying, you know, it's not about water depletion, this and that, because you'll see people when they're dieting for competitions, they will, uh, one, not get lean enough um, or not get as lean as they wanted, and then two, try to compensate for that by trying to quote unquote drop water, um, which can be very dangerous on the body. Dangerous and mostly ineffective. The next comment um, is about best bodybuilding program, he says. He wants to know about bodybuilding as a teenager, getting proper nutrition when you're in high school, etc. And this is something I promised, I think, a while back. I don't know if I promised, but I said that I would make a, uh, I wanted to make a, a novice sort of program. Maybe it'll be the LOA novice program or the OGUS novice program, but the, in, in general, practically all bodybuilding or weightlifting novice programs are surrounded around the same concepts progressive overload, milking the shit out of linear noob gains, and usually three full body. Um, workouts Monday Wednesday Friday maybe a, an A workout and a B workout uh, A workout may start with uh, it, it may be something like this squat bench press chin up um, uh, maybe a one bicep movement one tricep movement a shoulder press maybe another leg movement or something like that and um, the, the bigger exercises like the squat, the bench press, the deadlifts, the, every, they're all like sets of five. Maybe the deadlift, you might limit it to one set of five, but the squats, you'll be doing you know three sets of five to five sets of five and so on. And focusing on these sets of five to build up a nice base for yourself. The B workout may be something like uh, deadlift, overhead press, um, more rowing and chin-ups, pull-ups, etc one bicep movement, one tricep movement. Um, if you're deadlifting, you may or may not really need to add shrugs, it's up to you. Um, but you can see how they're basically like a full body workout. One on Monday, one on Wednesday, one on Friday. Most things are sets of five, though for the isolation movements like bicep or tricep, maybe uh, somewhere between uh, six and 12 reps. But for the majority of movements, Throw a novice on that kind of Monday, Wednesday, Friday workout A, workout B program, uh, where the where main compounds are sets of five, and you'll be having them milk that shit. Starting with just the bar on the bench press, milking it up all the way up five pounds a week, or maybe even ten pounds a week in the beginning uh, weight jumps, and just milking that shit. And that's what I recommend to most of the teenagers out there. And it's kind of sad because most teenagers who begin lifting weights, they do not do that. But uh, it's becoming really common, um, just with just a little bit of research, that that seems to be the way to go for most people. Um, and believe it or not, that's kind of actually how I began lifting weights. It was somewhat like that, um, although it was slightly upper lower, more so. Um, but I'm grateful that I wasn't put into like a chest Monday, back Tuesday kind of thing, and I had a I had a strength coach in high school, so I got really lucky as a teenager. And bodybuilding as a teenager, uh, dude, keep it simple. Grow, 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 grow. Caloric surplus, one gram per pound body weight. Since you probably you know aren't working as a teenager, you don't have money for shitloads of protein, so just get a gram per pound of body weight. Keep yourself at a caloric surplus and lift weights and get stronger progressively for three to five years. Then look at the mirror, then cut, and you will admire all of your hard work and your gains home from the gym guys I have to get my last meal in uh, finish these macros I'm trying something new um, I put some chopped up mushrooms with pico de gallo salsa here on the frying pan before I throw in my eggs and egg substitute uh, I got my eggs and egg substitute five eggs uh, five servings of egg substitute right there and I'm letting this cook first normally I put it all together at once but I'm thinking maybe this will create a different kind of flavor if I cook this first before throwing it on top of the, uh, the eggs. Over here I got Pop-Tarts, and that helps me hit my uh, my macros at the end of the day. So let's put these uh, eggs on top of this, see what happens. There we go, just added the uh, eggs. I'm gonna make sure I keep on scrambling this so it uh, doesn't burn the bottom. That's one thing with these scrambled eggs, guys, I've noticed personally, is just keep on 
keep on moving it around um, every you know 20 seconds or so not letting it go more than a minute definitely uh, especially you know the hotter your uh, stove is on so if you have it on hot you don't want to walk away from it for too long you might burn it uh, so I'm constantly stirring it uh, with uh, I'll put it up to about six maybe seven maybe eight on the uh, scale right there and I'll keep tossing and turning it I'm getting close to I'm getting close to being done and this smells delicious. I'm gonna throw some garlic, some onion, and some pepper on this. Awesome. Dexter time. Equip me a little bitch! Ogus cake!